Barclay. How good to see you. Oh, how kind of you to decorate our altar with such beautiful flowers. It's a pleasure. But please, don't let me interrupt your work. Oh, no, no, no. Believe me, it's a welcome interruption. It's only 20 feet up from the cellar, but carrying 50 pounds of plaster makes it seem like 40. Of late, I've been patching more walls than souls, I'm afraid. How's your family? Fine. How are your children? Wonderful. I have 22 now. They're planning a big Thanksgiving dinner. It'll be a happy occasion at the orphanage. Well, uh, perhaps this will make it even happier. Bless you. I wish my own parishioners would drop by as often as you do, and as generously. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have to get on with my work. Mrs. Bogley. What is it, Mr. Taylor? Well, uh, yesterday Nick fired me. You were warned about your drinking. Well, there's nothing wrong with a nip now and then. Not on the job, not when it interferes with your duties. I'm sorry, Mr. Tate. Well, no, Mrs. Barkley, you, uh, you could change Nick's mind. My sons run the ranch. And your condition appears even wetter today than it was yesterday. Big people, you buglies. Is something you and me down here together. I don't relish this any more than you do, Mr. Day. Bring the light over here. This is where the steps were. What steps? Well, this must be the cellar. We're buried alive. But still alive. Oh, kerosene lamp. We're in luck.
I'm Victoria Barkley. This is Mr. Tate. You're from the Modoc tribe, aren't you? Yes. Well, you know, we're buried down here, and there's no way out. Thank you, Arch. Stay out of the house and keep everybody out in the open. We'll be back as soon as we find Mother. I'll go with you. No, no, Heath, you stay here and take charge. She was going to visit Father Nichols. Try the church first. Right. Yeah, come on. Yeah. If in our present situation as medicinal, more would be hazardous. All right. All right, what now, Your Highness? Well, we can sit tight and hope we'll be dug out, but first we would have to be missed, then located, and and it could be too late. I prefer we try to. Wait a minute. I'm trying to remember something. Well, you go right ahead and remember. We got what's left of a lifetime. My husband was once owner of a gold mine. This cellar was part of it. Therefore, there must be tunnels. Above the ground and below it. The Barclays are everywhere. We'll search the walls. I'll go right ahead. I don't even know your name. Naomi. Naomi. We'll each take a wall. But we've got to try. Naomi. You don't want your baby to be born down here, do you? Barkley here. Miss Barkley? She came to see you. Oh, yes, yes. She, uh, she brought flowers and a contribution. She get out in time? It, it all happened so fast. I, I didn't see anything. There were four or five people. And I, I searched, but I, I didn't find anyone. Audrey, what you're trying to say is you think everybody got out all right. Yes, yeah, I'm sure they did. you say everybody, everyone got out? Do you know that for certain? Well, there, there were three people in the pews, and, and Mrs. Barkley. Oh, yes, uh, a young Modoc woman, an expectant mother. You didn't see what happened to her? No, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't. Please excuse me, I, I must get to the orphanage. that door lead to? It used to be the cellar. Mr. Tate! 
got a key? Maybe we can batter it. Here, yeah, hold this. It's no use. It's all blocked up. But maybe we could use a beam. There's no room for a beam. This barrel's in the way. Oh. Then we'll push the barrel. Push the barrel. That's a waste of energy. Look at the size of this. Well, I'll say one thing to you, lady. You're long on nerve. It's not together. Again. I'll say one thing for you. You can be helpful when you want to be. We need more bandages. I'll get someone on it right away. Harry! The church in the east end of town are the worst here. Are there any more injured out there? No, we brought in everybody we could find. If anybody's buried in We'll dig for bodies later. Go see if you can find Harry. Clearing the town and sending everyone out to the flat. She may be there. That's right. Uh, Hold it. Raise your right hand. What? You two, Nick. Come on, get him up. No. Snyder, come on. We got no time to waste. I need deputies. Get over here. Get your right hand up. You solemnly swear to uphold all tasks and duties as directed to you to the best of your ability without reservations. Fine. You're all deputized. Now you got two immediate jobs: patrol the town and keep looters out. Fred, bandages. I know, Doctor. Snyder, you think you can dig up some sheets in that store of yours? We need bandages badly. Of course, Fred, now listen to me. I know, you want to find your mother, go on out to the flats and get back in a hurry. Uh, sure. You see any looters, you've got orders to shoot them on the spot. Right. the way out. Leave me here. No. Leave me here. Let me stay here and die. Let no, 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 no. Let, let me all oh, getting out. Now, come on. Come on, come on. Let's go. Uh. house is buckled, but no one is hurt. We'll all sleep out, I guess. I guess so. The air shakes, but the sun still shines. How Andre, much... this waiting. Heath, I'm going to town to look for Mother. I'm going with you. The ranch won't disappear. much that dead end. Oh, we may have missed Eternal. We'll go back. I do not wish to go back. 
Omi, we are all getting out. Now think of the baby and of your husband. I have no husband. Well, I knew there was a good chance she wasn't married. Hey, for a smart girl, you haven't been around very much. I've been around enough to meet too many people like you, Mr. Tate. Now, we've got to keep moving until we find a way out. You're very nice, Mrs. Barkley, but it's too late for me. Would you leave, Mr. Tate? Suppose I don't want to lead. You don't have to lead. You don't have to go at all. Oh, I'll go. I like taking orders from a Barkley. If it wasn't for your son, Nick, I wouldn't be here in the first place. So you say, please. Please. Excuse me, I'm looking for my husband, Roy Snyder. Oh, yes, right over there, Mr. Snyder. Are you all right? I'm fine. I was worried about you. Oh, I'm fine. I'm... What happened to the store? You know, the sign fell and the windows are broken out, but otherwise nothing was damaged. Well, why don't you go back home and rest? Oh, I, I couldn't rest with all this going on. Perhaps I can help with the injured. And please? Roll bandages, carry water, something. Anything? All right. Come on. Help me. Any sign? Not yet. You two were supposed to stay back at the ranch in case you showed up there. I can ride back later. Wasn't she at the church? No. Uh, Padre says he's pretty sure everybody get out in time. Are we just going to stand here and do nothing? Take it easy, Ali. Right. Let's go and see if Fred's heard anything. You just take it easy. We'll Doc will be right with you. Is that hurt? Any luck? No. No. No, we were hoping maybe. Well, she's not here. What are we going to do? Wait? Wait for what? Take it easy, Audra. I'm going to the church. Audra. Let go of me. Audra, it's dangerous there. Let go of me. I don't care. Audra, we got orders to stay here. I don't care about any orders. I care about Mother. Do something. Do something. <laughs> take it easy, sis. Sheriff, I caught this man looting. All right, open it up. I, I didn't mean to, Sheriff. I, uh, I found these in the street, and I, uh, yeah, I found them. Come on, empty out your pocket. Yes, sir. And uh, I found this, and found that, and uh, I meant to bring them in. And found, found that, too. Come on, let's have all of it. All of it. That purse! This is Mother's! Are you sure? I gave it to her myself on her birthday. Don't you remember? I didn't open it. I didn't touch it. Where'd you get that purse? Well, you see, there it was. Tell me or so help me, I'll kill you right on the spot. Inside the church. Inside. Inside? Inside. And that means she never got out of the church. Let's go. Wait a minute. What do you mean, wait a minute? I can't let you go inside that church. One good shake, you could all get buried alive. Look, Sheriff. Heath, I can't be making any exceptions. That's right, we can't break the rules ourselves. We'll handle this. Fred will take the responsibility for our own lives. We've got to go there. Joe, how bad is that church? Well, it's about the worst. A good part of the ceiling and the altar caved into the cellar. If anybody's under there, why? Is there, a, is there a staircase that goes down to the cellar? Yeah, it's blocked tight and filled up. We could use explosives. No. A blast and all the rest of the good walls that come tumbling down. Then we can dig! Let's go. Audra! I can't let you go with him. He's right, Lee. You can't help us there, but you can help here. We'll let you know. I'd like to come along and help. Come on, we can use the muscle. This air don't smell so good. Or well, maybe it's because it's less of it. Oh. Naomi. 
Tracings in it. Was there ever a mine here? Yeah, this church was built over an old shaft after it was worked out. Yeah, the family had an interest in it. Well, you remember where the openings are? No, it's over 20 years ago. I don't remember much about it. Well, there must be deeds, records, or something. And they would show the openings. Where would they be? Well, they'd, they'd be down at the recorder's office. I'll go there. What was the name of the mine? The Victoria. You'll need help. Come on. Should have left her back there. She needed a few minutes rest. How many more tunnels are there? I don't know. Well, that's refreshing. Her Highness don't know. You should have thought to bring some more candles and an extra supply of kerosene for the lamp. And I should have packed a picnic lunch. You're very tiring, Mr. Tate. Yeah. 
Well, I'm not the drag she is. Yeah. You too good to drink with me? Yeah. There, you might be queen of the valley, but down here, you're nothing. You're no better than I am. If I could drink out of this bottle, so can you. Now, here, drink it. Of course, Mr. Tate. Of course. Listen, mister. I've broken trails, hunted and ridden shotgun with my husband. I've kicked, clawed and gouged my way with him. Don't you ever dare touch me again. And one thing more. From now on, I don't care whether you live or die. Just don't interfere. I didn't mean anything. It's no use. We'll keep looking. Snyder, is the land office building still standing? I don't know. Why? There'd be records there. Well, why don't I go check? We'll save time that way. Hey, hurry. Go back to work. You take a couple of minutes rest, huh? Um. And you don't know that she isn't. Or what do you know? There's an Indian girl. She, she, she was waiting at the church. She... She, she came at the town to Black Bay, Billy. She said that I was the father of her child. I, I couldn't have her waiting in the store. I, I told her to, to wait for me at the church. You know how it is. You, you know how it is. Who, who, who knows who a kid like that would believe? You're talking to a kid like that? <laughs> to keep your secret, you'd let people die? <laughs> Oh, pain. Oh. 
So you was... We ain't never gonna find our way out of here. I didn't think I'd end up this way, not this saddle bum. All my life I've been looking for something. And all I find is tough luck. Nothing ever works. Somewhere, somehow, I thought sure I'd latch onto something. Just one piece of luck, and old Tate, he'd be right up there. Hope springs eternal, Mr. Tate. Well, not right now, it doesn't. You got any more bright ideas? Well, um, why don't you take that tunnel, and I'll take the other tunnel, and we'll go in about 50 feet, and then meet back here and decide which one to take. There must be an opening somewhere. 50 feet. Yeah. All right. We'll be back, Naomi. Wait a minute. What is it now, Mr. Tate? Why should you take this tunnel and me that one? It doesn't make any difference which tunnel as long as both are searched. All right, then I'll take your tunnel. Oh, for heaven's sake, it's not my tunnel. Fine, then it's mine. I'll take this tunnel, you take that one. Oh. Snyder, violating your oath, destroying public property. How could you? With my mother down there. I don't know what's gotten into your husband, Mrs. Snyder, but I'm shorthanded now. And I'm putting him in your custody until this emergency is over. I'm going to the church. All right. Roy. I want you to tell me everything. I told you, I was, I was out of my head. I, I was wrong, I'm sorry. There's more, isn't there? I, I told you, I've just got to face up to what I've done. You haven't told why you want to destroy those records. Why you kill any chance of saving Mrs. Barclay. Roy, it doesn't make sense. Oh, Anne, Anne, I'm so sorry. So am I, but for another reason. That time you went to San Francisco, I forgave you for that dance hall girl. I thought there were other women, but I couldn't be sure. Those trips to Sacramento. Oh, Anne, Your please. repeated visits to the Modocs. The Padre said there were several people in the church, including an Indian girl. Oh, really, Anne? If she was there with Mrs. Barclay, then that's why... Really, Anne, not here. Please, not here. Here and now. Blast it! Mother's been down there for hours. There's got to be a faster way. Well, there isn't. Trying to reach that old wine cellar was a long shot. Searching for that mine deed was a long shot. And right now, it's a long shot that we'll ever... Wait a minute. Now, every mining operation I was in had more than one opening. There was always an opening for escape. I mean, it's out there somewhere. How long were the tunnels? A uh, hundred yards, a mile? I don't know. All right, it was 20 years ago. Now, there's, there's bound to be people around that were living then. Joel, you were around when my father worked that old mine. 
I wouldn't. I wouldn't even remember that. I wouldn't know where to begin to look. All right, but there still must be some old timers around who would. Well, there's old Gus. Uh, no, he he died last year. The, uh, Hank Withers. He moved to Laredo. You just have to find some. About Jeff Wilson. Now he's still out at the ranch. Of course, yeah, Jeff. Jeff was on there. Keith, you ought to try to find him. Go on. <laughs> We have a, we have a big house in Alameda, a fine ranch. We'll take care of you and the baby. Please go without me. Please, please go without me. It's strange. I went to the church because because of the orphans fund and then uh... one more tunnel, Naomi. We we'll try one more tunnel and then oh, I can't. I can't. Well, you rest, child. Uh -huh. Long ago. It's been over 20 years since the mine was worked. Think, Jeb, there must be an opening somewhere. Doesn't anybody know? Uh, seems to me, finished mining, we closed it up. All the openings? I think there was one of the openings in Little Canyon. We've got to find it. I said was. Likely it's all grown over. Never find it now. You'll find it. Get on your horse. I, I, I don't hardly remember. The ride will jog your memory. You, ride into town, tell my brother to bring dynamite, picks, and shovels, and meet us at Little Canyon. All those trees. Well, is it or isn't it, Jeb? Let me think. The sun sets in the west, and the opening faces out to it this time of day, I think. But the hill's all covered over. Oh, well, well. Jeff 
Lynch is here. Let's get to work. All right, fill your hands. Come on. Jeb, what about it? I know it's around here someplace. Wait a minute. Naomi, Naomi. Hey. I hear sounds, Naomi. Baby, help is coming. Hold on just a bit. Just a bit long, long. I'll get the dynamite. Got the set? Yeah. Audrey, you and Jeb, get out of here.
Audrey. Audrey? You want this child? Please. I'll try to be a good mother. He was born in darkness. That darkness has been lifted. Ready to go home? Uh-huh. Mother, you're going to be pampered for a whole week. Anything you want, you can have. <laughs> well, all I want right now is a good warm bag. All right. I'm sprinting for the sunrise out of the gray. Run, run, gotta get out, gotta find my route. The city's a trap, but that there's no doubt. Run, run till the end, till I shout. I'm free at last, what life's all about Lungs burning, sweat drips like tears Each step forward, outstripping my fears Skyscrapers slowly made me end till I shout I'm free at last, what life's all about Lungs burning, sweat drips like tears Each step forward, outstripping my fears Skyscrapers, pouring San Francisco train tonight. Another minute, you'd have been too late. I ain't never gonna get caught up. You keep trying, you sooner clean out the stables and testify that inquest anymore. Then it's all over. They brought in an indictment of first-degree murder last night. It's all over but the hanging. Corby Kyle for Colonel Ashby. One of the most despicable men in our community taken in exchange for one of the most charitable, beloved men. Not a very fair exchange. If I had my way, I'd kick Jake Kyle's and all three of his sons clean out of this valley. That bunch is worse than a wagon load of barbed wire. Sorry I'm late. Audra. Well, good morning, Audra. Good morning, Audra. 
With all this work going on around this ranch, I suppose you've been out dancing the moon down. Well, you're welcome to suppose all you like. You know, as soon as these odd jobs are through, maybe we ought to commence riding herd on our little sister. Mm. I'll have you know I was up at 6 o'clock this morning and picked up the plans for the orphanage for the meeting this afternoon. Uh, with the colonel murdered, you don't suppose that Mrs. Ashby will change her mind about donating that land, do you? Well, Mrs. Ashby told the committee that the children shouldn't suffer because of his death. I'm sorry, you just came from barging in. I want to do some talking. Jake Kyles, you get out of here. Nick, Nick. take much of your time, Victoria. Get those hats off. And just after asking a simple favor from an old friend, never asked the Barclays for nothing before except to be left alone. That's the way we've been with everybody in this whole valley, up till now. All right. What favor can we do for you? I've been all over town. Ain't a lawyer anywhere as will even touch my boy's case. They're either afraid of Ashby's name or mad at Kyle's. Jared, he ain't afraid. He's pretty fair with them legal speeches. I'd like to hire him on. You willing? Now, Jake, you think about the reasons those lawyers turned you down. It's probably because they don't believe your son's plea that he's innocent. Because ain't one of them will even listen to his side. Jared, you're my last hope. I wouldn't ask you neither if it weren't for the fact that your daddy and me came to this valley together. A member of my family is the prime witness against your son. I thought of that, too. But it ain't as if he's a real member of the Barkley family. Nick. Now, Jake, I'll try and overlook that remark. But you understand this. I'll not accept your case. You're always yapping it up about justice. But when it comes to action, you're like all the rest of them do-gooders do nothing. I'm telling you, the real knife stickers in this town are the high and mighty mucky mucks like the Barkley. Uh, Jake, I that'll be enough. Are you heard Jared's answer? Don't make it any worse. All right, you see to it he keeps his nose out of our business and see that he don't tell any more lies about my own son. Mr. Cowes, I don't take to anybody calling me a liar. And I'm telling you, your testifying against Corby makes you one. Get out. Get out of here, Jake, before we forget you're an old man. Now move. Come on, Paul. Let's finish breakfast. He, I'm sorry for what he said. Thanks, sis. I'm sure if Jacob really tries, he'll find a competent lawyer. What difference does it make? Well, sometimes it has been known to make the difference between a verdict of guilty and innocent. But he caught him right-handed. And it's high-low, Jack, and the game, right? Right. Good afternoon, Counselor. Jared. Clem, how are you? Fine. Good to see you. Say, uh, I owe your brother Heath a drink for testifying at the inquest. He's a prosecutor's dream. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Would appear so, but, uh, you know, uh, too bad it cost uh, an Ashby to get rid of a Kyle's. <sighs> Tell me, Clem, is it, uh, is it true that Jacob Kyle's can't get anyone to defend his son? Oh, I hear tell he's been asking around. But unless Corby decides to change his plea to guilty, I don't think he's going to have much luck. Why are you asking? Oh, it's, uh, it's just that he finally got around to asking me. Mm -hmm. No, sir. Never a Kyle set foot in this shop. Him's so shaggy-eared, he ought to pay double dog taxes. I ain't complaining. I wouldn't want to dull my shears on any of them. Colonel Ashby. Well, they broke the mold when they made him. It's a grand funeral. I shaved him. Quick hanging would be a community service. Set a simple black-tongued example for the rest of them. He ought to hamstring the whole crew of them. Ought to time up McCabe. 
Clean him out once and for all from the land of civilized people. The only thing, hang it won't bring the colonel back. But at least he wouldn't be able to kill anybody else, that's for certain. Nice talking to you, Slim. Thank you, Miss Barkley. Been nice talking to you. Next. Kyles are a menace to our community. The record shows a history of 14 individual arrests during this past year alone. Corby Kyles himself has been charged with drunkenness, destruction of private property, conspiring to defraud, assault with a deadly weapon, and now we know him to be the lowest of all human beings, a murderer. Don't you think this editorial is just a little prejudicial? You call it prejudicial. I call it the truth. Tell me, George, are all writers so emotional? Or is it just that lawyers are too objective? Jared, I don't understand you. Your own brother is living proof of Kyle's guilt. Oh, I'm well aware of the case against him. I just wonder if you'd print anything for him. Hello, Audra. Well, who are your little friends? Well, these are some of the children whose parents were lost in the epidemic. I'm taking them over to Mrs. Bradshaw's house. There's just no room in the old orphanage. Children. Why didn't you go on to Mr. Perkins' store and tell him I said to give you each a licorice stick? <laughs> Jared? Hmm? You're thinking about the Corby Kyle's case. What makes you say that? Because I heard what you said to George Allison. Oh. Well, I just don't like him when a newspaper condemns a man before he's even been tried. After all, it might be one of my clients sometime. You're not thinking of changing your mind and taking the case. The last thing in this world I want to do is defend Corby Kyles. Anyway, that's nothing for you to be worried about. Yes, it is. How do you think Mrs. Ashby's going to feel about being associated in the orphanage with us if you defend the man who murdered her husband? Now, Audra, Corby Kyles might be guilty, but... Might be guilty? He saw him do it. That's proof enough. Jerry, you've got to promise me you won't take the case. I'm sorry, honey. I can't make you that promise. Now you see what I've been doing all year. The new orphanage is going to be as perfect as I can get it. Here are the sleeping quarters, and this is the infirmary we're giving the money for, the pantry, the kitchen, the dining room. What else do these kids do besides eat? They wash and dry dishes. Well, I wouldn't think they'd have time between meals. Oh, don't you worry. They study harder than most children. All right, I'm sold. Anything I can do, you tell me. Excuse me, sis. Well, you're home early. Town lost its charm. No, town's fine. Well, Audra seems to think you're going to commence a war against her. Audra jumps to conclusions. Jared, if you knew a man was guilty, would you defend him? Only to save his life by pleading for mercy. Especially if there were extenuating circumstances. But if he claims he's innocent, well, that would depend on whether I could believe him or not. Do you believe Corby Kyle's killed Colonel Ashby? Heath, the more everyone hangs him in advance, the more I wonder about it. I saw him, Jared. You think I made it up? No, of course not. But you still think there's a possibility that Kyle's didn't do it? At this moment, yes. There's a shadow of possible, but not probable doubt even though you sincerely believe you saw him do it. All right. Then I want to make it clear that you don't turn him down on my account. Thanks, Heath. But that's the cart before the horse. I haven't even talked to the party in question yet. Morning, Fred. Well, I see they're keeping you busy. No, they ain't. And that's what I like about this job. What can I do for you, Jared? I want to see Kyle's. What do you want with him? Maybe offer to draw up his will. Can I see him? Come on ahead and waste your time. You ain't got nothing worth leaving, as far as I can see. Kyle's, you got a visitor. Well, 
Looky here. <laughs> a high and mighty Barkley has come to lord it over a poor old Kyle's. Well, I didn't bow for your brother, and I ain't gonna bow for you, and I ain't gonna bow for nobody else in this coyote town. And I'll tell you something else, mister. I'm gonna gnaw your hanging rope in two, and I'm gonna come and get you. And your brother, and that stinking sheriff, and everybody else that's a-crowing over me right now. You refuse to testify at the inquest. Does that mean you're gonna plead guilty? I mean, what difference does it make? I ain't got no lawyer to prove otherwise. All right, Corby. Did you do it? And what if I say yes? Then I want to know if you're going to plead guilty. Why? Because a lawyer might be able to save your life. My pa said you wouldn't have nothing to do with me. Your pa might be wrong. There's something scratching the ear crawl there, mister. Coming on them cheap maybes. Well, maybe I'm guilty and maybe I'm not. Which is it? What if I said I'm not for sure? What then? <laughs> of course I'm not. And I got a good notion to tell the whole world about this town. It's full of tall, doggy stuff shirts. They know what I'm around, good as the Kyle's. And believe me, mister, I've seen both sides of it. Corby, if I thought you'd level. You Barclays, you ain't got enough to railroad me. So you come here to shut me up, huh? I came down here to consider your case. Now, if you don't want even that, then at least I've satisfied my conscience that I tried. Well, hold on a minute. <laughs> Keep shirt on. I mean, hog, dog, or devil, I got to have me a lawyer. All right, then, you tell me the truth. Plain and simple. You wouldn't know the truth. You run over it in the street. Try me. All right, you want to know about your high and mighty, rich, respectable Colonel Ashby? He had two suits. One of them was clean and one of them was dirty. You want to know how he got his real money? He got it from opium. You're lying. And let me tell you that that kind of talk is only going to dig you in deeper than you are already. I figured you'd say that. Colonel Ashby was the middleman for the whole of Central California. All I did was carry the stuff to the buyers like the Hipsu Tong. And that's what was going on back there in that alley. It was the payoff from the head Chinaman. It was one of them Chinamen that killed him, not me. Can you identify that Chinaman? No, I can't identify him. They all look alike to me. Like I told you, all I do is carry the stuff. The payoff comes direct. So there I was, back there in that dark alley. I'd come to get my money for my day's work. And I see Colonel Ashby, and I seen a man behind him. And so I yelled to the Colonel, look out, Colonel. And he turned around, and that's when the Chinaman, he done it. So I go over to this poor man, and I pull a knife out of him, and I chase that Chinaman. And that's when your brother, he jumped me. Oh, what's the difference? You ain't gonna believe me, cause I ain't nothing but a cow's. There's one difference. If your story is true, it will ruin the reputation of one of the most respected men in this state. Well, that's, uh... <laughs> that's his fault, not mine. My brother testified that he saw you stab Colonel Ashby. And I told you I didn't do it. He's seen a Chinaman, not me. And I swear that on my mother's grave. Your story is so bad, I'm almost tempted to believe it. Well, thanks, Jared. Don't you ever call me Jared. <laughs> Kyle's. 
No. But it's true I'm thinking about it. <laughs> you're gonna think yourself right into a hole, brother. The more you think, the deeper you're gonna get. No, Nick, I'd say it's more like treading water. Looking for a bottom that should be there, but isn't. Well, I just don't see feeling sorry for Kyle's. They came here with the same chance as our parents did. The same kind of land. And enough land to keep three boys out of the trouble that they're always in. Look, why don't you give some of that good advice about how to run their place to them? Because it's none of my business giving advice to people that don't want it. Jared. How long has it been since you've been out to Kyle's place? A long time. Why? Well, why don't you take a ride out there? Maybe you can find that bottom you're looking for. down, Barkley. I don't look up to folks when I talk. Doesn't bother me either way. Say your piece. Tell me, Jake, why do you let a good farm go like this? It's mine. Suits me. I'm a free man. I'm beholden to nobody. You figure the less work you do, the freer you are? You feel an extra proud because you got all your buildings covered in white paint? There's worms under that paint. Shoot. I knew the Barclays when they was kind of dirty. And kind of neighborly. I'll let that be now. On it, boys. But you didn't come all the way over here just to insult me. Maybe you came over to tell me your so-called brother decided against testifying. No, I'm afraid not, Jake. I just came over here to see if you're having any better luck getting a lawyer for Corby. None. You all are the same stripe. Soon as one of you hears a Kyle's within 18 miles of a crime, you right away figure it's him what done the dirty work. say if they were within just a few feet, Jake. All right, boys, I want those silver conchers in my hand right now. You got them conchers, Emmett? No, Pa, I ain't got them. We were just standing here admiring his horse and saddle. Hey, there you go, accusing my boys. Well, now, suppose we take it on the evidence, Jake. Those silver conchers were on that saddle when I rode in here. Now they're gone. Well, now, that don't prove nothing. Hand them over. Get away from me. Let go! Let go of me! I didn't do it! I didn't do it! Oh. Seems what everybody says about this family is true. You've never known an honest day's work or an honest dollar. Just a minute, Barkley. You don't seem to know a joke when it's played on you. Corby a joke, too? Hold on now. Takes a brain like a slippery water snake to blame Corby for them boys' foolishness. Besides, Corby's my burden, not yours. And you seem to be doing everything in your power to keep it that way, Jake. I think I'd recognize that perfume in the middle of a desert sandstorm. My, my, you look as lovely as summertime itself. Thank you. What brings you to town? Oh, the place to discuss law is in the lawyer's office, not at a breakfast mm -hmm. table. Very well, madam. 
Would you uh, please state your legal problem? Jared, there's nothing in the law that says a lawyer has to defend any special person. I mean, a lawyer has the right to refuse the case if he so chooses. If he has a good enough reason. No, there's nothing in the law that mentions he has to defend any special person. But when a lawyer takes his oath, he swears to defend justice and the Constitution. Audra says the, the committee believes that Mrs. Ashby will change her mind about giving the land to the home if you defend Corby Kyles. Yes, I've heard that. But in theory, that should have no bearing on the case. If you do take the case, that means you will attempt to discredit Heath's testimony. If I take the case. Jared, from the day Heath came to us, He's had to prove to the people in this valley that he's the equal of anyone. That his word counts no less than any other Barclay. Oh, Mother, don't you think I've thought about that? You know I don't want to hurt Heath. But he's told me he doesn't want to influence my decision either. Nonetheless, you will hurt him. Yes. Oh, that puts me nicely in the middle, doesn't it? Sure. I promise you. I will carefully consider everything you've said to me. Sorry to interrupt, but I think you'd like to know that the judge requested Matt Cooper to defend Kyle's, and Cooper agreed. Are you sure of that? Yes, sir. Well, amen to that problem. The usual tempest in the teapot, hmm? I'll see you at dinner. Well, I must say, I admire your courage, Matt. Well, thank you, Mr. Barkley, but uh, I'm not really sticking my neck out. You see, the judge promised to send a personal note to Mrs. Ashby explaining the court's position in having to assign a lawyer when a defendant couldn't get one, and my obligation to accept the assignment. Still, you could have found an excuse to get out of it. Well, since the judge protected my future, uh, I was glad to get a chance to have the experience. Well, I admire your honesty. Good luck, Matt. Mr. Barkley. Losing this case, do you think that can hurt my career? Not if you do a good job. What makes you think you're going to lose it before you've even begun your preparation? Well, I talked to Kyle. He's guilty. You can see it in his eyes. He's a killer. Figure to work on that all night, do you? I want to get it fixed right. I'm sure, you won't need any help. No, it's just about through, Nick. Well, I'm going out to bed. I'll see you in the morning. Night. Night. Just as soon blast you down as look at you. What do you want? We aim to help you learn your testifying. I don't need any help. Maybe you best just say you was minding your own business the night Ashby got himself killed. Yeah. You couldn't see who it was anyways, could you? I could see. Just don't you tie in Corby Kyles with no knife, no alley, no killing. I caught Corby red-handed. You're wrong, mister. Maybe dead wrong. You don't want to get your family into trouble, do you? If it takes burning out that fancy house over it needs killing cows, it'll be done. And that prissy sister of yours, she could easily end up on a boat to China. And it's a long, long way back. <laughs> Again, Alan. You better listen. 
answer now. Get it right. You testify the wrong way, and we will come back and put this brand so it'll mark you for life. One guess. Kyle's? It was them. You and the boys gonna do a little visiting. Nick, you know better than to play vigilante. In this case, I wish I didn't. What'd they say? They threatened the whole family if I testify against Corbin. I see. Jared, no one can stop me. I know that, Heath. And I promise you they'll be punished. And to think you were considering defending one of them. Corby is not responsible for what his family does. I'm taking the case. You can't! No! I thought Matt Cooper... He was. But what chance does a man have when his own lawyer is convinced he's guilty? choice. Tell me why one of our leading lawyers has taken it upon himself to go against the best interests of the town, his family, and himself. Well, now, George, I'm happy to learn you're still talking to me. After some of your recent editorials, I was beginning to wonder. Or is it maybe, now that you've gone over all the evidence firsthand, you're going to advise your client to plead guilty tomorrow? Maybe. And maybe since I have gone over the evidence firsthand, I've uncovered a few facts that even your newspaper didn't know about. Here's to, uh, success. Um, and the harvest. Yeah. Audra, you look lovely. Thank you. Well, now, Audra, I've been the county seat and a good many other places, but that's the first time I've ever seen a dress like that. Yeah, sort of resembles that new filly. Except you can see more brisket than peddler. Yeah. I do believe it's one of those new horse blankets just came out this year. You've heard about it, Mother. It's supposed to be good for circulation. Oh, hush up, you farmers. You wouldn't know a fancy dress from a sassafras patch. <laughs> Come on, let's have dinner. Yeah. Any word from Jared? No, not a word. I wonder where he is. Excuse me, Mr. Nick, but Mr. Luke told me to tell you the time has come. Uh-oh, Cedar Bun's coming full. Excuse me. You're gonna hold her hoof, Nick? Yeah, something like that. Well, I'll bring you a roast beef sandwich. Thanks, Eve. Nick. Karen. Sorry I'm late. Karen. Audra. Take it, it's true, Mrs. Ashby's back down. And I can't really blame her. So I guess there'll be no new orphans home until we find a new piece of land. Audra, I guarantee you'll have it. No, it isn't just the land or even the money. It'll take another year to reorganize, and that's another year out of those children's lives. 
Honey, it won't be that long. I'll help that committee speed things up every way I can. And until then, believe me, I'm sorry. Jared, maybe it isn't your fault. Maybe it's just the times that we live in that, that allow children to suffer so much. Well, whatever it is, I hate it. Audra. Dad. Needless to say, I'll be glad when this trial is over. You think you got a chance, Jane? Good one, based on what I've got. Only I've heard that Green has a surprise witness. That worries me. And I don't. Heath, you understand that when a lawyer takes a job, he does it any way he can. No holds barred. So that means if you can, you're going to turn me upside down and inside out. That's what it means. I'll be ready for you. Your Honor, I intend to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that Colonel Ashby could only have received a fatal wound in the hand of the defendant. Now, Mr. Kyle, when questioned by Mr. Barkley, you stated that this here knife is your personal property. Yeah, that's my knife. I made that knife myself. And this knife belongs to you, doesn't it? I told you that that's the knife I pulled out of Colonel Ashby's stomach before I chased the Chinaman that stabbed him. In your testimony, Mr. Kyle, you said you, uh, you wouldn't own a knife like this. Now, uh, why should we believe you? Um, can I show you something? Order. Order. Order in this courtroom. Now, do you think I'd own an off-breed toad sticker like that thing there? I want no more such demonstration in this courtroom, Mr. Kyles. Satisfy yourself with answering the questions. Well, yes, sir, Judge. <laughs> I'll answer them. That'll be all, Mr. Kyles. Witness dismissed. <laughs> I'll call your next witness, Mr. Barkley. Your Honor, I'd like to call Mr. Asa Harmon to the stand, please. And Mr. Harmon, would you state your occupation, please? I'm a special detective employed by Senator Harrison's investigating committee. And how long have you been so involved? Just a little over six months. What is the purpose of your investigation? Legislative restrictions on the importation and sale of harmful drugs. All right, Mr. Harmon, would you tell us, please, what you know of the connection between Colonel Ashby and Corby Kyles? Kyles worked for Colonel Ashby. Colonel Ashby was a member of a ring distributing opium to Tongs here and in San Francisco. Order in this court. Continue, Mr. Barclay. Mr. Harmon, are you saying that Colonel Ashby, a man of spotless reputation, was involved in the narcotics traffic? Now, he was more than just involved. Colonel Ashby was one of the prime movers. And according to your information, how long was he involved in this trade? Objection! You will not make murder any less repugnant by maligning and slandering the good name of the victim who's not here to defend himself. Your Honor, I am merely trying to establish the victim's true occupation in order to show that there might be others with stronger motives to have committed this crime. Now, I, I deeply regret bringing out this sordid background. However, I am sworn to defend my client by all possible means. Objection overruled. Please answer the question, Mr. Harmon. How long was he so involved? We have records showing that Colonel Ashby has been involved in the narcotics trade for over a period of 20 years. Then it is credible to believe that he may have made an arrangement to meet somebody else, possibly a member of the Tong, in the alley that night. Yes, sir, I would say so. Now, Mr. Harmon, would you tell us, please, what you've been able to find out about the narcotics traffic and how it operates? Yes, sir. 
Stuff is imported into this country, diluted, repackaged, and then distributed to various cities and communities. The original investment pays off at about 1,000% profit. The addict becomes a virtual slave to his supplier. Congress is presently working on legislation which will make the public sale of harmful drugs illegal. You tell him, father, you tell him. Order. Thank you, sir. No further questions. You wish to cross-examine, Mr. Green? Thank you, Your Honor. Not at this time. That'll be all, Mr. Harmon, and thank you. You're dismissed. Are you ready to call your next witness, Mr. Barclay? I am, Your Honor. I would like to recall Mr. Heath Barclay to the stand. Court recalls Mr. Heath Barclay to the witness stand. Mr. Barclay, you're aware that having been sworn in before, you're still under oath to tell the truth. Yes, sir. Be seated. Barclay, according to your testimony earlier in this trial, you stated that the quarrel you heard from the alley sounded like such a critical matter that you felt you should interfere. That's correct. You further stated that upon entering the alley, you saw two men fighting in the shadows, and that when you came close, one man ran away and the other slumped and fell from a knife wound in the abdomen. Is that correct? That's right. Can you tell me the location of the nearest street lamp to that alley? Street lamp? No. According to my measurements, it's 87 feet away. Over 30 feet from the entrance to that alley. Now, from that distance, that lamp couldn't shed enough light in that alley for a man to see his hand one foot in front of his face. And yet you state that you clearly saw Corby Kyles. He was in the shadows. But I know it was him. Even in the shadows? That's what I said. Now, Mr. Barclay, would you please tell us again everything that happened up to the time just before you entered the alley? I was walking along, and the headlight from the San Francisco Limited passed over me. I heard a man yell, and I ran into the alley to see what it was all about. Even though it was dark, I could see in the shadows clearly enough to know that it it was Corby Kyles who ran. And Colonel Ashby had been stabbed. You're sure? I am. Sure enough to put a noose around the defendant's neck? Yes, I got no reason to lie. I'm not suggesting you're lying, merely that you're mistaken when you state that you clearly saw Corby Kyles running away. And I say you're dead wrong. And I intend to prove you're mistaken by showing you the shadows that you saw into were purely imaginary. They weren't imaginary! Now, you're out of order, Mr. Barkley. Now, if you speak out again, I'll order you out of this courtroom. Continue. Can you tell me what kind of a moon there was that night? No, I don't recall what kind of moon there was. Very likely. Your Honor, I hold here in my hand a newspaper, which I'll submit later in evidence, which clearly states that there was no moon that night. And if there was no moon, there was no light. And if there was no light, there were no shadows. So you would have had to recognize Corby Kyles in what virtually amounts to total darkness. Now I submit to you that this is really what happened. From the sounds you heard in the alley, it was clear to you that somebody had stabbed Colonel Ashby and run away. Now you chased after that man in the total darkness and you stumbled on Corby Kyles. And putting his reputation together with what had happened in the alley, you assumed that it was Corby who had done the stabbing. Now, having assumed that much, your imagination took you one step further. It led you to believe that you saw more in that dark alley than it was humanly possible to see. 
Now, I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you absolutely sure it was Corby Kyles you saw and that it could not have been somebody else? No. I guess I'm not sure after all. Questions, Mr. Green? None, Your Honor. Well, I guess they're gonna have to let me go, right? Your chances look pretty good. Your Honor, I uh, would like to call one more witness at this time. Mr. Henry Bingham. Mr. Bingham, you're a train engineer in the Northern Division, is that right? Yes, sir. Now, where were you this month, on the night of the 15th at 11.30 p.m.? I was just heading number nine out for San Francisco. I was a couple of minutes late. Did you know Colonel Ashby? I'd seen him up and down the line for years. Now, Mr. Bingham, would you please tell the court in your own words exactly what you saw that night as your train left the station? Yes, sir. I just cleared the last switch and was watching ahead. And straight into the light of my engine, I seen these two men fighting in the alley. Well, now, how long did the light from your engine shine on the fight? Couldn't say for certain, but it was long enough to see them both clear. Well, uh, go on, Mr. Bingham. Tell us, uh, who did you see? The one that was well-dressed I recognized right off as Colonel Ashby. The other one I recognized at the same time. What was the other man wearing? Farmhand dress is the best I can tell you. Well, now, Mr. Bingham, I can readily understand how you might have recognized Colonel Ashby right off, but uh, uh, how can you be so sure of this other man? I saw his face real clear, and I'd know his face from any other in a second. Oh, well, now, uh, why is that? I'd seen him many times hanging around the station when I was changing trains. Never knew his name, but I'd never forget his face. Mr. Bingham, why has it taken you so long to come back here to testify? When I read about Heath Barkley catching him red-handed, why, I figured it was cut and dried without my having to come down here to say my piece. Then I read about the trial going on, and I sent the telegram. Can't you make him shut up? Can't you make him shut up? Uh, Mr. Bingham, uh, about the man you saw that night fighting with Colonel Ashby in the alley, is he uh, here in the courtroom? He is. Would you uh, point him out, please? I'll kill him. I swear to you, I want to kill him. That's him. The man you call Corby Kyle. He didn't do it. He didn't. Do it. What do you mean? Uh, you couldn't have seen me. I mean, nobody could have seen me do it. No, nobody could have seen me do it, huh? I'd like to propose a little toast. 
Here's to Big Brother, who it seems is capable of making one of the biggest mistakes possible. Audrey, do you know what mistake he's talking about? No, I don't. Maybe you know me. Beats me. Mother, do you know what mistake Jared's talking about? I haven't the faintest idea. Well, Jared, how about dinner? Dinner? Well, it's almost 10 o'clock. You mean you haven't eaten yet? The family's not about to have dinner tonight without you. <laughs>